welcome to The Writer's Dream. Our show is a show where authors have a forum where they can talk about how they write their books, how they publish their books, and how they market their books. You can find us on Facebook under The Writer's Dream. Uh, we are also on YouTube. We are uh, broadcast from the studio here at LTV EH. And we are also available on Cablevision from Woodbury, Hop Hog, Riverhead, and Wappingers Falls. Today's guest is Jackie Belfiore, and Jackie has written, we have a real treat today, because Jackie has written a um, recipe book, a cookbook for children called Spaghetti Park, and Jackie is going to demonstrate one of the recipes today. Jackie, how did you get started on writing a cookbook for kids? Well, uh, actually, it didn't start out as a cookbook. Uh, I was um, at a park called Spaghetti Park in Corona, Queens. And I thought to myself, how cool would it be if this place was really made out of macaroni? <laughs> so then as I started writing the story, that's how the recipes came about. I said, I can incorporate recipes into this book and make it like a story and a cookbook. So how is children. it a story? Well, it's a story. It, it's uh, written in verse, and it's a poem, and it tells uh, things that go on in the park. You know, children play king of the mountain on, um, on a big pile of pasta, uh, there's fusilli in the trees, uh, the, the tabletops are made out of ravioli, uh, and it just uh, goes on from there. Sort of a, a, a real um, a Italian festival. Exactly, exactly. So what in the Spaghetti Park, the real Spaghetti Park, um, inspired you to do the, to write the book? Um, anything else that your children, your family? Well, my, my family is actually all over this book, um, from the recipes to events that have happened. For example, in the book, there's a picture of a mother and two children running across a bocce field, a bocce court. Mm -hmm. And that actually happened in real life. You know, we were there, and my, my young son decided to run across the court as the game was going on. So, uh, you know, I was able to take personal experiences and put them into the book, which was very, uh, it was fun. It was very fun. So uh, what, where did you get the recipes? Are these old family recipes? Um, no, mo some of them are. Uh, and some of them I wrote as I was writing the book. Um, like the, uh, the, uh, the tortellini in, in Brodo. Mm -hmm. That's something that you know I always had growing up. Uh, the meat sauce, my mother always made that. Uh, and I changed, you know, made some changes here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, I simplified some of it. I was going to ask you that because it's a children's cookbook. Uh, you you really have to explain a lot more than what you would in a in an adult cookbook. Right, so it, especially with um, safety with the children. You know, I want to make sure that they're not going to take this book and just say, "Oh, I'm going to make a recipe." They they need to have an adult with them. They need to have permission from an adult. Uh, you know, I don't want them to think that they could just come and do this on their own. Exactly. So stove safety. And then I, I would imagine that you would have to explain the cooking implements as well. Exactly. And techniques of, you know, you can say to an, an adult cookbook, five cloves of garlic, but where do you get the garlic from? You know, well, how right. do you prepare the garlic? Right. Well, also, I, I feel children today are a lot more uh, food savvy, and a lot of them... The children that I've been dealing with with the book, mm -hmm. they know a lot already. Um, it's just a matter of them being comfortable, because uh, you need to be comfortable in, with the stove and and your equipment. And you have two two sons. I have two sons. How old are they? Uh, Michael is twenty one and Anthony is fourteen. Do they cook? Uh, Michael cooks. He likes to grill. He does a lot of uh, grilling. Mm -hmm. Anthony cooks when he has to. <laughs> <laughs> That's most of us. <laughs> right, right. Um, and Mike, Michael will, you know, he'll be known, like I'll say, okay, Michael, I defrosted this. He'll, you know, take it upon himself to fix dinner. Uh, and, they, and they're good at it. My whole family cooks. Um, my brother owns two restaurants, so my nephews cook. Uh, my nieces cook at home. They bake. We're all comfortable in the kitchen. Yeah, that's that's great. So, what are you going to cook for us today? I'm going to cook pa uh, Baba's bow ties. Um, Who's Baba? Baba's uh, my grandfather. Okay. When uh, my cousin was little, she couldn't say Grandpa, so she called him Baba. So it the name just stuck. Mm -hmm. So we, we 
So this is named after him. Okay, so I'm going to let you go. Okay. Do. All right, so first uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that the handle is not here, this way, because when you're cooking, you don't want to bang into it. So I leave that over here. It's cool over here, mm -hmm. and it's easy. So now I'm, first I'm going to take my oil <laughs> and spill it all over the counter. <laughs> Just like home. Just like home. <laughs> And that's why I keep this handy so that mm -hmm. I could just wipe it up. Because you want it, you want to keep things clean. It's clean and organized. Yes. While you're working. So I'm just gonna raise the heat a little. And that's that's a really good thing to teach kids because uh, I remember my own cooking experiences as a kid. Uh, my mother would come home and you know to a wrecked kitchen. Right. And uh, that's not fun. Right. And well, it's you know you have to keep it clean so you don't have any accidents. Right, and do you always use olive oil? I like olive oil. I like uh, using extra virgin olive oil. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the flavor. And also, different oils have different flavors. Even though it may be extra virgin olive oil, it, mm -hmm. it may come, some of it is blended uh, from Spain and Greece. Some of it's just from Italy. And so from you read the label and, and like the olive oil that I'm using now is a little peppery, has a little peppery flavor to it. And some olive oils actually come flavored. Yes. You know, with the different, I mean, yes. natural flavors, yes. not, not raspberry or anything like that. Uh, well, I, I like really? using the, um, the basil, a basil <laughs> flavored olive oil. Yes, the smell of these basil leaves is driving me crazy. Right. I want you to know. <laughs> so now my heat, uh, my oil is hot. I'm going to add my onions. Mm. Yeah, you know, the sizzle. I love the sizzle. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> do you indicate in the recipe book pretty much uh, what heat to put this on as a safety measure? Well, it's a, it's a medium a medium heat. You don't want I, you don't want the oil to get too hot. It's uh, if it smokes, it, it's too hot. If you see that it's starting to smoke, you could just take the pan away from the heat, mm -hmm. cool it down a little bit, and then continue cooking. So now I started with. Um, my onions, and now I'm going to add my garlic. I'm uh, going to faint from that. I love the smell odor. of garlic. <laughs> At any time of the day, it reminds me of when I was growing up. On a Sunday, I would go out on Saturday night and stay out late, and then early in the morning, I would wake up to the smell of garlic and meatballs and yes, yes. And I'm just giving those a nice, uh, nice stir. Going to add a little salt. Okay, now I'm going to add my meat. Normally, uh, for this recipe, I use uh, what's called a meat lo um, meatloaf mix. Mm -hmm. It's uh, equal parts ground veal, pork and beef. And I think it, it gives it a really nice flavor. Mm -hmm. But for today, uh, due to unforeseen circumstances, <laughs> I will be using just beef. But it'll be fine. It, it's good. A good cook improvises. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to break up the meat. So while this is cooking, I want you to tell me, because I, I, I ask this of every Italian cook, What's the secret of your meatballs? What do you put in your meatballs? In my meatballs, I put um, grated cheese. I like using Pecorino Romano mm -hmm. uh, because it has a really nice, strong flavor. Mm -hmm. I put eggs, um, breadcrumbs. Do you use the flavored ones? I use flavored breadcrumbs. You don't have to because you, you, you know, you're going to be putting in garlic. You're going to be putting in your own spices, but I like using the flavored breadcrumbs. It just adds that little yeah. um, extra flavor. I just find that when I make my meatballs, they're too hard. Well, you can um, put a little bit more egg in it, and that could make them a little softer. Mm -hmm. You know, when I, for two pounds, I usually use like two eggs. My, my but Italian, you could put more eggs in. You know, my Italian mother-in-law used to use, um, she would soak stale Italian bread right. and cut it up. 
Yeah. She made the best noodles. Oh, gosh. They were so good. So I, I always question everybody on their meatball techniques. Okay, so I'm going to raise the, uh, the heat on this a little bit. Okay. Yeah, because the meat's cold. Right, and, I, and I'm going to break up the meat into smaller pieces so that it cooks evenly. And you could make this, uh, you know, I like my chopped meat a little small, but if you like big chunks of meat, you, you don't have to break it up so much. Mm -hmm. And I, I always tell children, you know, kids when they're cooking, you know, make sure when you're stirring something to hold, you know, hold the, the, the handle with one hand and stir with the other hand. And whatever you're comfortable with, if, you, if you're comfortable using this in your right hand and stirring with your left hand, but as long as you keep the pan sturdy. Stir, yeah. You don't want it moving all over. Right, because it can spill. You have to keep con in control. Those are all good tips. Okay, so that's going to brown. Now, have you gotten any feedback um, from people who've used the book, from the kids who've used the book, on what their favorite recipe is? Uh, yes. Well, actually, um, this one family, they love this recipe. Uh, and They've made it for family gatherings, and everyone, everyone really loves it. The, the Baba's bow ties is, is one of their favorite. What's so. the most difficult recipe in the book? I would say um, if you're making the monogot fresh with crepes, mm. that would be the most difficult for, you know, for a child to do. Yeah. But to simplify it, like I said in, in the book, you could, they have uh, monogata shells right. all pre-made. Right. And, and they're actually... There are actually two kinds uh, in that uh, I've noticed if you go to an Italian store, they're like like a sheet, a, a square. Right. And which then the ones in the box are... That are already in the shape of the shell. Right. Right. They, they even also have them stuffed already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, if, you know, if you and don't have a lot easier. of time... <laughs> yeah, oh, that's... Yeah, that's... A, yeah. a lot of times when I'm at home, I do go the easy route because, you know, when you work and... Sure. Uh, your children involved in sports, you tend to look for the shortcuts. What, what I used to do, or what my mother would do with me, which I think is a great thing for um, parents to think about, is that you know sometimes your kids who are, say, seven, eight, nine, and older, probably eight or nine, they're home before you are when you work. And right. they can actually start dinner for you. If right. You teach them the proper techniques. Right, exactly. Or even, you know, take something out of my my 14 year old a lot of times uh, I'll prepare my uh, I do some crock pot cooking mm -hmm. I'll prepare the crock pot at night and then before he goes to school because I, I leave before him mm -hmm. he'll get up he'll take the crock pot out you know and he'll plug it in turn it on and then when I get home from work it's everything's ready right so Boy, this is really beginning to smell so good <laughs> You see how the meat is starting to brown? I do. So I'm a sip of water. Oh, that looks good. So we'll give this another minute or two, and then I'll add the um, the tomatoes. Okay. Do the tomatoes have spices in them? Uh, no, uh, this is just a can of uh, crushed tomatoes. Some tomatoes come with basil in it. Um, I'm not sure actually if this one did or not, um, but sometimes they, they do have mm -hmm. um, spices already in it. And also with this recipe, uh, you can adapt it. Like say at this point in the uh, cooking, you may want to add something else to it. Um, if, say, you add peas to it, you can use this as a base for a, a rice ball, a stuffing in a rice ball. Mm. Uh, you could also use this, um, this meat sauce in lasagna. So it's really a basic recipe. Yeah, and uh, you could add anything that you'd like. You know, when you're sauteing your mushrooms, I mean, your onions and uh, garlic, you can add mushrooms to it. You know, it's, it's fairly um, 
Mushrooms are my favorite food. <laughs> I, I just started eating, I mean, I always loved mushrooms, mm. and I don't know why I never made them as often as mm, I should, I love but I started making them a lot more now. Well, while you're doing that, I'm going to read a little bit from Spaghetti Park. Okay. Okay. Let's go explore Spaghetti Park. It's made from magical pasta that glows in the dark. In the early morning, ZD songbirds are flying over and on a rectangle-shaped court, lightly dusted with grated parmesan. Bordering this area are strands of linguine, the length of the court where two teams of four play bocce, an Italian lawn bowling sport. Watch them as they aim for the polino, the round, smaller ball. Points go to the player whose bocce meatball lands closest to all. You can set yourself down on a ricotta stuffed manicotti seat. You'll love Spaghetti Park, which looks good enough to eat. They're beautiful illustrations. Thank you. See small shell pasta flowers that are spread about everywhere, and schoolgirls who have farfalli, bow tie shaped pasta fastened in their wind blown hair. Cheerful children skillfully jump ropes of recycled spaghetti, while others eagerly listen. For their race to start, on your mark, get ready. So this is, uh, it is really a wonderful book. It has a lovely story. Thank you. And then eventually we get to the recipes. And I like the fact that uh, you have a, a section here called Getting Ready. Right. And Getting Ready is really all the safety procedures. Mm -hmm. And I think um, after I made the suggestion about kids starting cooking before their parents came home, uh, you really want them to know these safety precautions. Exactly. You know? And um, the recipes that I see in here are spaghetti park pie, tortellini and brodo, Baba's bow ties, penny tricolore, Nana's monogotti, Aunt Ida's pillow throws with pesto. Mmm, pesto. I love pesto. So while you were reading, I added the tomatoes. Okay. And now I'm going to add a little salt, pepper, and fresh basil. Mm -mm -mm. And um, I see you have the water boiling there. I have the water boiling because in a minute I'm going to uh, actually I'm going to raise this to bring it to a high boil a high boil, and I'm going to add uh, the pasta. Okay. Because this takes approximately 30 minutes to cook. Mm -hmm. So when it's, when I'm at this stage, I usually start, you know, make sure my water's boiling, sure. I start my macaroni. When I was younger, I really didn't do much cooking. My job was to um, grate the cheese, um, set the table and go next door and get basil from Uncle Nick's garden. Like that, <laughs> that was my, my cooking experience as a child. Me too. I made fudge. Oh, That's nice. That's all I did was I made fudge. And, and um, I remember when my mother went back to work and she would say, well, I want you to cook the potatoes or whatever. And my father was really in a funk for months until I learned to do a few things right. Right. <laughs> he was used to her very, very good cooking. And I just 